so uh, i welcome you all uh, for the third uh, class on fungal infections today we will be uh, dealing with subcutaneous fungal infections uh, these are the fungal infection that involves dermis subcutaneous tissue and they are uh, different uh, kinds of fung fungal infections uh, they are mice they can be mycetoma sporotrichosis chromoblastomycosis pheohyphomycosis chromoblastomycosis and pheohyphomycosis uh, commonly uh, both are covered under the name of chromomycosis then lobomycosis rhinosporiotosis then what is mycetoma or madura foot madura foot is basically a chronic uh, slowly progressive granulomatous infection of skin and subcutaneous tissue uh, with involvement of fascia and bone affecting most commonly extremities but uh, any any site can be involved and these are the sites which are trauma prone and uh, th these are uh, they are commonly seen in field workers farmers or uh, workers who work with the wo wood or work in the forest and uh, uh, why this um, uh, name is given as madura foot because this was reported by gill uh, who was a scientist who, uh, in uh, Madurai, which is uh, situated in south, uh, southern India? So uh, the name was given Madura foot or Madromycosis. Although it, uh, the most common uh, uh, place where uh, this uh, infection is more commonly seen is Sudan, which is also known as capital of uh, mycetoma or Madura foot. Then how we classify uh, these uh, mycetoma? They can be based on uh, causative agent or based on the color of the grains which they discharge in their pus. Uh, when they these mycetoma they are caused by fungi, then they are known as eumycetoma. If causative agent is bacteria, uh, which is commonly actinomycetes, which are long filamentous bacteria, then it is known as actinomycetoma. Uh, then uh, regarding the color of the grain the bacterial uh, mycetoma they have white to yellow grains except there is one uh, uh, species that is actinomycetes pelletri which produce red to pink grains so it is very important to uh, note here that if the grain they are red to pink then we can say it is because of actinomycetes pelletri as far as fungal mycetomas are concerned the grains in fungal mycetoma or u mycetoma they are usually black or they can be off white or yellowish white but commonly they are black the uh, these mycetoma they are more commonly seen in developing countries and especially in rural areas as i have already told you that uh, sudan uh, which is known as capital of mycetoma there are many cases uh, in the rural areas of sudan but in asia also in india it is also common uh, the commonly the young adults especially males because they are more exposed to the uh, injury and they are, are uh, more working in the fields or in the forest where the chances of trauma is more they are more exposed and, and then field farmers field workers uh, they are more at risk uh, when we talk about the prevalence uh, all over the world fungal mycetoma that is u mycetomas are less common as compared to the bacterial mycetoma that is actinomycetomas 60 percent of the cases they belong to actinomycetoma whereas 40 percent of mycetoma they are u mycetoma or fungal mycetoma when we talk about the pathogenesis how the disease is um, set in uh, there is entry of the pathogen at in the skin or subcutaneous tissue by injury when there is injury uh, at the injured site there is uh, entry of the pathogen and then subsequently there is development of a lesion which usually starts with the papule and then a swelling and uh, uh, subcutaneous uh, subcutaneous swelling which then um, uh, enlarge in size enlargement of the lesion is there and then burrowing uh, of the lesion deep into the sheet tissue can be there and sometimes fascia and bone can also be involved and then uh, this is be uh, this, uh, by this there is tumor like growth this, that is known as tumification so uh, when this tumor like growth is formed then multiple uh, sinuses are there 
uh, form there which discharge zero uh, purulent uh, fluid that is pus with granules or granu uh, uh, granules of various colors and these uh, uh, gran um, grains are basically micro colonies of etiological agent that can be bac bacteria or that can be fungal also then sometime other uh, um, variants of mycetoma can be present as we um, were discussing about the mycetoma of food that is madura food which is uh, 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 otherwise also uh, mycetoma of ear is also described where the injury uh, due to uh, vex removal uh, weak injury is there then the, uh, because of that injury there is uh, de deposition of the uh, fungal um, or uh, bacterial uh, causative agent into the skin and it causes mycetoma of ear then mycetoma of back, uh, back. we usually see that uh, farmers or workers they carry goods on their back and uh, uh, it can be wood it can be grain bags it can be stones any kind of uh, material can be there on the back and when there is injury because of the infected material and then then uh, and there, there is entry of the um, um, etiological agent into the skin or subcutaneous tissue and then mycetoma is formed then the third kind of mycetoma is mycetoma of head and neck which is usually rare they are also known as mini mycetomas and uh, sometimes people who carry bundles of wood on their head they sustain injury and they are suff they are sufferers of this kind of mycetoma then about the clinical feature of mycetoma a lesion they develop at the site of inoculation of etiological agent uh, in subcutaneous tissue as we have already discussed and mostly the uh, most prone areas or most affected areas are extremities especially foot is more commonly involved than hands then their lesions can be on the trunk they can be on the scalp also and they are um, as such they are more on the trauma prone sites and rarely thighs and gluteal area can also be involved in clinical features of mycetoma we should remember three things uh, that is a triad of three things that is tumification uh, sinus formation and uh, discharge of grains in the pus from the sinuses these are the three important things in the clinical feature of a mycetoma basically there is a chronic granulomatous swelling predominantly over feet with discharge of grains of varying shades color consistency and feel of the granule it helps us to differentiate about the cause what is the etiological agent we can differentiate on these features and when blackish brown grains are there the usually the uh, etiology is fungal that is it is eumycetoma uh, the foot is usually deformed and scanty bacterial infection can also be there uh, so when we treat these uh, eumycetomas which are caused by fungal uh, elements uh, because of bacterial scanty bacterial infection in treatment we have to give antibiotics long term antibiotics also for the for the complete resolution of the lesion along with antifungals so scanty bacterial infection in a case of eumycetoma is also important to keep in mind as far as treatment of these mycetoma mycetomas are concerned so how we diagnose although clinical features are um, evident and the diagnosis can be clinical but we have to confirm the etiological agent for that we have to do some investigations as far as uh, uh, radiological diagnosis is concerned we can rule out bone involvement muscle involvement by doing x-ray scan um, x-ray uh, of the involved uh, involved part and ct scan and mri we have specific changes on mri we will be discussing later then in lab we have to confirm the uh, etiological agent and that is the gold standard for the diagnosis of mycetoma first of all uh, we collect the pus or grains uh, aseptically uh, we ask the patient or uh, ask uh, our resident uh, doctors to apply wet dressing over the lesion uh, for overnight and next day we uh, see we uh, see the uh, gauge for uh, um, any pus or any grain and then we notice the size of the grain shape of the grain texture of the grain and color of the grain and then we process the grain accordingly uh, by doing koh mount uh, after crushing the grain we see uh, for the morphology of the grain then we also uh, send these grains or pus for bacterial and uh, uh, fungal culture for final diagnosis by microbiologist 
in u mycetoma the size of the grain is usually 2 to 6 micron uh, with hyphae and cl uh, chlamydospores and they 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 are stand by fung uh, special stands which are used for fungi we will be discussing later then actinomycetoma the, the basically they are filamentous bacteria with diameter of 0 0.5 to 1 micrometer in size and they are gram positive in this picture in this slide we can see uh, 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 grains which are, which have been collected over the gauge wet gauge along with a piece of tissue or discharge and they, they are black in color we can see they are black in color and they they must be hard so they are grains of eumycetoma and in this in slide we can see the clinical picture uh, uh, where the scar mark of the previous excision biopsy and surgery over the right breast around areola is seen the arrow indicates this this arrow indicate arrow indicates the site of excision excision biopsy from the subcutaneous nodule and in the second picture we can see multiple black brown hard grains multiple black brown this is black brown hard grains surrounded by fat tissue surrounded by fat tissue on excision biopsy from a nodule so this must be a case of eumycetoma with black grains when we do the histopathology we can we send the uh, biop skin biopsy for histopathological examination and on histopathology we can demonstrate these grains in the histopathological section uh, as we can see in this uh, uh, photo micrograph uh, that uh, the central part of this picture uh, is brownish which is a grain and surrounded by chronic inflammatory infiltrate infiltrate uh, again here the same same thing center is uh, brownish part is grain of uh, the causative agent and the surrounding is chronic inflammatory infiltrate in he is staining then this is a typical picture of madura food that is mycetoma of foot we can notice that there is tumification large lesion tumor like lesion is there then multiple pus discharging sinuses are there with discharge of zero sinuous fluid or pus and then um, when we collect this pus then we can demonstrate the grains so all the three things we have to keep in mind that is tumification of the lesion that is tumor like lesion then sin sinuses discharging pus and third is demonstration of grains from that pus so these three things are essential for the diagnosis of mycetoma another picture of mycetoma and that is madura foot we can see swelling of the uh, sole and this whole of the sole is studied with multiple uh, uh, papillonodal regions with multiple sinuses which are discharging zero sinuous fluid and then uncommon sites uh, can also be there uh, of the mycetoma it can be chest it can be head and neck it can be anywhere in the body and it is poorly understood uh, uh, why actinomycetomas they are more frequent than eumycetoma at uncommon locations that is abdomen, abdominal wall chest head and neck so these mycetoma they are more more um, uh, commonly with bacterial agents that is they are more actinomycetomas rather than eumycetomas in this picture we can see the first picture is without treatment and the second picture is after treatment so severe scarring will be there severe deformity can be there so complete recovery uh, is not that good and the scarring is ultimately there because deeper tissues they are involved and this is a picture of another patient who was uh, admitted with us in our department she had she had uh, madura foot and uh, she was put on treat you it was you mycetoma and she was put on adequate antifungals but she was lost in uh, lost into the follow-up and then she returned back after uh, uh, six to eight months uh, she left the treatment and then uh, there was subsequent development of squamous cell carcinoma uh, over the soul and uh, she was uh, referred to plastic surgery and oncology department for the uh, treatment of uh, scan development of squamous cell carcinoma so when these patients they are not treated properly or they do not take the treatment uh, regularly then there can be development of uh, malignant change 
these are uh, the pictures of uh, madura foot again we can see large tumorous growth with multiple uh, uh, discharging sinuses and there is total deformity of the foot it was uh, these kind of patient they have to uh, put on the oral therapy as well as we have to go for surgical therapy also sometimes amputation is uh, a choice uh, we cannot save the part of the patient uh, foot of the patient so we have to go, go for amputation so it is really um, concerning for the patient that uh, sometime it can be uh, it can be uh, agonizing for the patient then you can see another picture large tumor like growth with discharging sinuses again whole of the fit is distorted and there is total loss of the shape of the fit and it must be very difficult for this patient to walk and uh, then this is another uh, picture of mycetoma then in this picture we can see in the vessels and this uh, 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 lesion where the fungal wall can be demonstrated fungal element can be demonstrated in MRI and then as I was talking earlier also there we have specific signs on MRI the, this is known as dot in circle sign which is commonly seen in new mycetoma and we can see that there is a circle and then at the center there is a dot that is the fungal element involving the soul so uh, these uh, in this table we can see different kind of grain uh, and uh, the causative of fungi or causative bacteria when that grains they are dark and black they are commonly fungal element that is madurella mycomatis madurella griziae exophila species leptospera species then uh, when the pale and unstained uh, uh, grains are there it can be because of pseudo lascaria boidi acropomonium species then aspergillus species and uh, fusarium and microsporum uh, there are different kinds of fungi which can be seen with pale or unstained uh, grains then uh, white grains they are skin in, uh, seen in scudo, scudosporium ap apiospermum then yellow brown they are seen in nocardia brasiliensis nocardia caviae actino madura madurae streptomyces so, so uh, Sumeriensis. these are bacterial uh, uh, cause, causes of mycetoma then yellow grains they are seen in uh, pleurostomo fora so when we talk about the orga uh, causative organism as we know they are either they are fungal elements or they are bacterial elements when we talk about uh, fungal and which causes uh, mycetoma which is known as u mycetoma the commonest species are madurella mycomatis madurella griziae acrosporium species and exophila ginsalmae these are four important uh, fungus which we have to remember they are the causative agent of u mycetoma when we talk about actinomycetoma or bacterial mycetoma the streptomyces uh, somaliensis actinomadura pelletrae we should remember this pelletrae because this uh, uh, actinomadura pelletrae it uh, has red to pinkish grains so by um, by noticing the color of the grain we can directly say that it is because of actino madura pelletrae then actino madura madurae ac uh, the nocardia asteroides nocardia brasiliensis these are uh, filamentous bacteria which cause actinomycetoma then what are the clinical differences overall differences between a fungal mycetoma and a bacterial mycetoma u mycetoma is slowly invasive so there is late presentation it is rel relatively uh, asymptomatic it is not painful that's why pe a patient do not report to the uh, treating physician early because it is slow in uh, progression slow invasive and there is late presentation whereas in active mycetoma it is rapidly invasive and that's why there is early presentation to the physician but uh, in u mycetoma there is minimum symptoms there is no or minimal pus whereas in actinomycetoma pus is uh, uh, more and early early presentation then uh, when we talk about the color of the grains they are black in fungal or u mycetoma and they are yell uh, yellowish to white in actinomycetoma uh, the deformities they are more in eumycetoma although they are slow there is a late presentation but deformities are more because the, they are ignored more so patient report to the treating physician late so uh, 
uh, when they uh, come for the diagnosis it is already late uh, deep bone involvement can be there so total deformity of the foot can be there then uh, as these actinomycotic mycetoma they are more uh, more uh, mm, symptomatic and more inflammatory that's why uh, early presentation is there to, so less deformities are there as far as granules or grains are concerned they are uh, they are macroscopic they can be large up to 5 microns which are uh, which can be visible to naked eye whereas in actinomycetoma they are microscopic they are very small so they cannot be seen with without microscopy and when we talk about gram staining in uh, in fungal uh, mycetoma or u mycetoma it is uh, gram negative but fungal stains that is gms and past stain both they are positive when we do the staining uh, in the biopsy and then uh, uh, in actinomycetoma they are gram positive bacteria and uh, the fungal stains they are negative then about the treatment in u mycetoma we have to treat the patient initially on antifungals and as i had already told you that simultaneously antibiotics are also important because we have noticed that secondary bacterial infection in chronic uh, chronic lesions is commonly seen so when we treat these patients on antifungals as well as uh, systemic uh, antibiotics at least for three months then recovery rate is much faster and the deformity is less uh, when the deformity uh, chances of deformities are more then um, we have to resort to surgical treatment that can be amputation also so it may be uh, it may be traumatic to the patient and uh, in antifungals we commonly use uh, itraconazole or when the uh, it is very resistant then uh, IV amphotericin B can also be used along with surgical treatment. In actinomycetoma they respond to antibiotics but duration of treatment is prolonged that is 6 to 9 months or it may be 1, or one year to 1 and a half year and we have to give sulfonamides that is ceftran, uh, ceftran in double strength then injectable in the form of amikacin and gentamicin then uh, oral rivampicin tetracycline doxycycline various kinds of antibiotics we can give then uh, th this was all about mycetoma all about mycetoma so they are disabling they are uh, difficult to treat and some sometime amputation can be required so whenever a patient uh, you see a patient of this kind large tumorous growth with the discharging of pus from the sinuses and if you de can demonstrate grains then it is a case of mycetoma you should refer that patient to dermatologist or put on the patient on uh, if it, you suspect it as eumycetoma then put on antifungals if it is actinomycetoma then put on antibiotics this was all about uh, mycetoma the second important uh, fungal infection chronic fungal d fungal infection is chromoblastomycosis it is a chronic fungal infection of skin and subcutaneous tissue and the lesion they are uh, papillonodular and verrucous lesions that's why it is also known as verrucous dermatosis and the organism um, again it is uh, the fungal uh, elements they are phylophora verrucosa cladosporum carinae and fonsecchia species when we talk about the clinical features of chromoblastomycosis they start as a warty papule which enlarge and expand to form a large plaque which is verrucous and uh, it is uh, wart like verrucous um, in appearance and commonly again it is seen over the extremities that can be feet or um, legs or, or hands or rarely on neck and face um, any any part of the body can also be involved but it, it, it is usually on the extremities that to lower extremities as compared to upper extremity again males are more uh, exposed to the environment uh, then they are the more sufferer and middle-aged that is 20, 20 to 60 years of age may, men they are affected again uh, when we talk about the climate tropical climate is more dangerous so it is more predisposing to fungal infection as usual then farmers, miners, they have high risk because there is exposure to the soil and digging plant material and wood. Then uh, as far as uh, diagnosis, it is uh, we have to demonstrate, uh, although clinically it is quite evident, but uh, we have to differentiate this condition from 
cutaneous uh, tuberculosis uh, tbvc and uh, when we do the biopsy then uh, we can differentiate it and when we uh, prepare koh uh, preparation from the scrapings of the verrucous plaque we can demonstrate copper penny bodies which are also known as medullar bodies or sclerotic bodies i'll be showing uh, in the subsequent slide how they look like then uh, when the diagnosis is confirmed uh, and we can send the uh, biopsy fung uh, skin biopsy for the fungal culture and on fungal culture they can pinpoint the mucositive fungus and then we have to treat the uh, treat the disease uh, accordingly we can uh, treat it with cryotherapy and uh, heat therapy then they, they are two type two kinds of physical therapies then oral therapies we can give in the form of itraconazole um, uh, 100 to 200 milligram then terbinafine in 250 to 500 milligram on larger uh, larger doses of antifungals are required and combination of antifungals are also required and as the, um, uh, these fungal infections as such subcutaneous fungal infection they are difficult to treat and the treatment duration is one year to two and one year to two two years and sometime there is recurrence in the lesion so sub subsequent treatment has to be given uh, then we have to uh, give uh, saturated solution of potassium iodide which we give uh, especially uh, in sporotrichosis that it, it is also recommended in blastomycosis also where we uh, prepare a saturated solution of potassium iodide and then we give uh, uh, as uh, drops in drops and the dose we start from five drops uh, three times a day and then we uh, escalate weekly the dose to maximum up to 40 drops three times a day but uh, our patient they tolerate uh, 10 to 15 drops or 20 drops three times a day because they can develop side effects of potassium iodide so we have to restrict on the, uh, on the lower dose when systemic therapies are concerned then amphotericin b uh, in the form of iv infusion we have we can give when uh, disabling lesions are there then surgical excision or amputation at times may be required this was a patient uh, I have seen for the first time in my career uh, when I was doing my PG. Uh, he was a farmer uh, who used to uh, also work uh, in the forest also. He sustained injury while he was uh, working in a forest uh, for uh, timber preparation, timber uh, making. Uh, then uh, subsequently he developed lesions over the feet and then it extended all of the all of the leg was involved and subsequently he also developed lesion over the face that, that must be auto inoculation we can see there is verrucous plaque uh, over the uh, over the toes then dorsum of feet and you can see these black uh, black points uh, these are important uh, when we prepare koh smear to demonstrate sclerotic bodies we have to scratch these these areas and the chances of uh, finding these sclerotic bodies are more in these areas and we had also demonstrated uh, sclerotic bodies in this patient uh, the same patient we can see uh, varicose lesions uh, over the face although it has improved after treatment uh, so it was because of auto inoculation there is no lymphatic uh, spread in chromoblastomycosis but auto inoculation can be there this was a second patient uh, which i um, i also reported uh, reported as a case report uh, there was extensive uh, involvement of the lower limb with the chromoblastomycosis there you can see the large verrucous uh, whitish uh, lesion large large plaque of multiple centimeters extending from uh, leg to thigh um, and, and he, he was also uh, put on antifungals but we lost this patient in the follow-up he did not come for the review then uh, an, another interesting patient uh, he uh, he was uh, she was a relative of a uh, healthcare worker uh, from Rampur area uh, she had some injury uh, with uh, wood splinter over the face and subsequently she developed this kind of lesion 
and uh, we put her we uh, done the biopsy and uh, it was proved to be a chromoblastomycosis uh, patient and uh, i put this patient on the systemic antifungal that was itraconazole for months uh, six to eight months and there was recovery and uh, you can see the better picture better uh, there is better picture after uh, one and a half month subsequently there was recovery in this patient and this is a KOH preparation where we can see uh, these uh, unicellular uh, bodies. They are known as sclerotic bodily bodies, medullar bodies, uh, or copper penny bodies. They are diagnostic for uh, chromoblastomycosis. Uh, they, they are fungal elements. They divide by uh, septate uh, division. And when we are able to demonstrate it, then it is, um, it is a complete diagnosis of chromoblastomycosis. This is another patient of chromoblastomycosis, the lesion uh, in the knee on the medial aspect, the uh, papillonodular lesions with scar formation and so this was all about chromoblastomycosis. So in chromoblastomycosis we have to keep in mind that uh, the lesion is verrucous in shape, verrucous in uh, appearance and they, um, uh, they can involve extremities and, uh, and they are also difficult to treat uh, we have to give patient long-term antifungals so uh, this is all about uh, blastomycosis uh, sorry uh, chromoblastomycosis then another systemic uh, another uh, subcutaneous fungal infection that is porotrichosis which is uh, very close to my heart because uh, uh, we got uh, national uh, level award in a um, uh, uh, on a uh, uh, publication on sporotrichosis from india it was uh, awarded as the best publication of the year by our association that is iadvl in, in uh, 2013 uh, we received initial level award uh, for the, for this uh, infection uh, i'll be showing you uh, later the clinical pictures and uh, when we talk about sporotrichosis, uh, we have uh, a belt of sporotrichosis from uh, which starts from uh, JNK, uh, that is Jammu, Jammu and Kashmir, to uh, Assam, that is the whole of the northern states of the India. And there is this area is endemic for sporotrichosis. This uh, infection is also known as Rose Gardner disease and because because when when there is injury because of the rose thorn uh, uh, thorn induced then uh, these thorns can be uh, contaminated with sporotrichosis uh, that is fungal uh, element then when there is injury then they, these fungal elements they get entry into the wound and this uh, kind of uh, infection is there so we, you should remember this as a rose gardener disease most common it is a most common defungal uh, subcutaneous mycosis but it is least serious although it is most common but it is least serious as a rule localized to skin and subcutaneous tissue only but exceptionally it can be dis disseminated especially in immunocompromised patients then uh, lungs can be involved muscles can be involved bones can be involved cns can be involved but uh, bones are more commonly involved when the uh, infection is disseminated and uh, it is caused by uh, the uh, dimorphic fungus known as porothic shenkai when we talk about the clinical feature uh, uh, the, the clinically uh, it can be um, the most common presentation is localized lymph uh, lymphatic variety that is lymphocutaneous sporotrichosis uh, uh, the, uh, when primary lesion is single then the secondary lesions they uh, are they appear along the lymphatics so whole of, whole of the limb or whole of the lower limb can be involved with sporotrichoid pattern and that secondary change in the lesion can be uh, shanker formation ulcerated uh, nodules can be formed and they all are uh, arranged linearly along the lymphatics this is the most common presentation but second presentation is fixed cutaneous sporotrichosis usually this kind of lesion we see on the face because on the face the lymphatics they are radially in uh, distribution 
so the, uh, the spread is not there and second uh, uh, reason for that is the immunity of cutaneous tissue over the face is better so uh, because of higher immunity the infection is restricted to a small area and the third uh, important uh, thing is that if inoculum uh, is less amount of inoculum is less then it uh, uh, remain fixed to one area so it ultimately there is fixed cutaneous type of sporotrichosis in sporotrichosis uncommon presentation can be there in the form of acneform lesions so acne like lesion can be there sometime nodular lesions can be there sometime rosacea like lesion can be there sometime large varicose lesions can be there uh, and very rarely hematogenous spread can also be there leading to systemic infection especially that of bones lungs muscles cns as i have already discussed when we uh, talk about diagnosis clinical features are clearly uh, diagnostic but uh, then we have to demonstrate uh, the fungus in the lesion we we do uh, we do the uh, skin biopsy then we send the biopsy for fungal culture and uh, this fung uh, this fungus this dimorphic fungus grow on the um, several dextrose agar very easily and uh, very early within a week we we can um, receive the positive report from mycology de mycology department so we can confirm the diagnosis by uh, sending a uh, uh, biopsy for fungal culture the, the, when that uh, diagnosis is, is confirmed then we start the patient on uh, antifungal therapy that is in the form of uh, saturated solution of potassium iodide as we had given in blastoma uh, chromoblastomycosis then uh, oral uh, antifungals in the form of itraconazole uh, 100 to 200 milligram per day uh, is sufficient and it has to be given uh, for longer duration the total duration of the treatment may range for four to six months and we have to continue the treatment uh, after disappearance of the lesion uh, three to four weeks more so we have to uh, keep the patient on treatment even one month after recovery of the lesion so that there is no recurrence but ketoconazole we do not use because of the, because of the hep hepatic side effects then M IV amphotericin B can also be given heat therapy and cryotherapy and then they are physical uh, kind of therapies they can also be given in case of sporotrichosis then about uh, something about the pathogenesis of sporotrichosis how it uh, uh, cause the lesion a single papule at the site of injury is there mostly on hands then uh, these uh, papules they have secondary changes in the form of erosion ulceration then purulent discharge uh, can be there uh, which is usually non painful we, uh, you should remember that these deep fungal infections they are painless that's why they are ignored by the patient so, and they are ignored by the physician and initially they are treated with anti uh, antibiotics there is no response then um, uh, ultimately they are referred to us because uh, uh, referred to us late because they are not painful so even patient and treating physician they are not concerned about the lesion so they um, uh, present late then dermal and subcutaneous nodules are formed and they spread along the lymphatics and when we do the biopsy there are cigar shaped yeast cell which can be demonstrated in the skin biopsy and they are pass positive and silver stain positive these are two uh, fungal stains used uh, by histopathology people right and uh, then uh, treatment we have already discussed and this was a patient in which, uh, who, um, a young female who came with this lesion over the nasal ella uh, there was history of uh, nose pier piercing with a needle that needle must be infected with the fungus and subsequently when biopsy was done it was sporotrichosis and another patient of our uh, who had sporotrichosis of the lower lid which is usually uncommon and this was another uncommon uh, case of sporotrichosis in which a child of seven years was suffering from sporotrichosis uh, of the ear uh, and this was a classical uh, patient of uh, lymphocutaneous sporotrichosis you can notice that this patient must have uh, done a tattooing or you can see ohm is uh, written on the dorsum of hand and that uh, tattooing machine must be contaminated with sporotrichosis 
Sporothrix Shenkai and subsequently there was development of multiple lesions uh, ulcerated nodal lesions along the lymphatics this was classical case of uh, lymphocutaneous sporotrichosis and this was also an interesting patient she was a young uh, child a school growing girl who sustained injury in the in the feet uh, subsequently she was operated for that injury in ortho department and she was put on uh, cast and subsequently when cast was in place she uh, started developing these kind of lesion you know, over above the cast then the ortho people they referred the patient to us that there is something wrong with this patient so uh, there must be some contamination when the surgery was done uh, with the uh, sporothrix shenkai and subsequently she developed lymphocutaneous spread of sporotrichosis ultimately when we sent the biopsy for fungal culture there was demonstration of sporothrix shenkai and she was put on antifungals and then she recovered and this was another patient which was uh, uncommon presentation of sporotrichosis i had published this patient also and in this patient we can see lymphocutaneous spread of hypertrophic sporotrichoid we can see three four lesions which are uh, multiple lesions in lymphatic uh, spread over face which is rare on face and uh, the initially it was thought that it is tuberculosis but when we work up worked up this patient uh, then the uh, skin biopsy was uh, positive for sporothrix shenkai and we put this patient on itraconazole and he recovered after four to five months of treatment and you can see uh, this picture after recovery and this was another patient with sporotrichosis this is atypical sporotrichosis that is eczematous lesion in sporotrichosis he must have sustained injury on the uh, arm while carrying some uh, wood or something on the back this was another uh, important patient initially we thought it is sporotrichosis but when we worked up then it turned out to be uh, lupus vulgaris which is a type of cutaneous tuberculosis so when we see these deep fungal infections we should always keep in mind differential diagnosis as a cutaneous tuberculosis so we have to work up these patients for tuberculosis also so ultimately he was put on ATT and he recovered completely within six months of um, anti-tubercular treatment this was another interesting patient in our department initially we thought it is chromoblastomycosis because we can see large varicose lesion on the feet and you you will be you will be surprised that the duration of the, this kind of lesion was 40 years 40 years he was suffering from this disease and ultimately when we see this saw this patient and it was diagnosed as cutaneous tuberculosis uh, varicose lupus vulgaris so it was rare presentation it was also published and uh, it was not a fungal infection so initially we thought fungal infection but it turned out to be tuberculosis and again on uh, ATT he improved yeah. so you can see the improved uh, feet foot after uh, anti tubercular treatment so, so so differential uh, diagnosis of tuberculosis is again important we have to differentiate fungal infection from cutaneous tuberculosis this was another patient of chromoblastomycosis another patient of chromoblastomycosis mm, and uh, that also comes in a differential diagnosis of verrucous sporotrichosis another patient who uh, visited our opd she was a patient of uh, uh, hypertrophic lichen planus uh, it, it is wrongly uh, written uh, lichen planus uh, dystrophicus or it is uh, hypertrophic lichen planus or it it can be uh, varicose DLE so, so again uh, she, lo she lost in follow up she did not turn turned up <laughs> then about this was all about uh, subcutaneous fungal infections so uh, you should remember uh, the most common uh, subcutaneous infection that is porotrichosis uh, which is uh, seen commonly in our state also so any lesion which is not responding to treatment for more than two to three months and the lesion they are in the lymph lymph lymphoid spread trichoid lymphotrichoid spread then we should think of sporotrichosis and we should start the patient on antifungals 
then we will uh, discuss something in brief about the uh, systemic fungal infection which are rarely encountered in our department but you should know, know about them they are divided into two groups endemic mycosis and opportunity opportunistic mycosis endemic mycosis involve any of the internal organ of the body along with the skin whereas opportunistic infections they occur in immunocompromised patients the first is histoplasmosis it is an infection caused by histoplasma capsulatum which is a diamorphic fungus and it is a systemic fungal infection clinically it affects lungs uh, reticular endothelial system cns kidney and rarely skin so, uh, it is similar to tuberculosis the presentation can be acute and it can be uh, chronic when the uh, lung is in uh, infected then it can present as uh, uh, the chest tuberculosis it can pre present like uh, chest tuberculosis and uh, then uh, when the dissemination is there then in, in dissemination the skin can also be involved and multiple systemic organs can also be involved primary cutaneous is very very rare and uh, in the primary cutaneous we dwell, we see shanker like ulcerated lesions with regional lymphadenopathy and sometimes the lesions they can be gentle also gentle lesions are also reported and this fungal infection uh, the cause is droppings of uh, birds and the fungus it, it is present in the droppings of the bird when these droppings containing fungus uh, uh, the, the dust of these droppings is inhaled then the, this fungus goes to the uh, 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 lungs and from there it can be disseminated to uh, disseminated to other organs and secondly skin also can also be affected then primary when only skin is involved then it is primary cutaneous infection it is rare then the lesion they start as a papule which ulcerate later on and nodular, nodular uh, lesions can also be there then there is granuloma formation sometimes there can be abscess formation and at subsequently fistula and scar uh, they heal with scarring and pigmentary change uh, with antifungal therapy then for diagnosis we have to demonstrate the parasitized uh, fungus in macrophages uh, and then it can be demonstrated in blood bone marrow aspiration by fnac also we can demonstrate the uh, fungus then it has to be treated with systemic antifungals uh, itraconazole ketoconazole amphotericin b ketoconazole rarely used now this is a picture of histoplasmosis multiple well-defined erythematous papul papular lesions over the back sorry then intracellular bodies which are capsulated oval bodies seen in blastomycosis histoplasmosis then uh, another infection that is blastomycosis this is chronic granulomatous and superative myc uh, mycosis caused by diamorphic fungus that is bli blastomyces dermatitis the clinically it affects lungs skin bones and cns uh, again see, uh, uh, skin is rarely uh, affected and the primary cutaneous lesions they are uh, following trauma they start as a papulopustular lesions and ultimately varicose plaques with scales and crusting can be there there is there can be central ulceration with cribriform scar and adult men with systemic infections are more common and in children acute pulmonary infection is more common and there is history of exposure to the soil we can see um, blastomycosis large ulcerated uh, plaque over the chin and uh, over the nose and uh, for diagnosis we have to prepare koh mount in which we can see broad based budding uh, uh, fungus that is thick walled uh, contour walls are there thick double contoured walls are there then we uh, have to do the biopsy and send the biopsy for fungal culture and ultimately uh, the mycology people they uh, they uh, confirm our diagnosis uh, with the uh, growth of blasto uh, then how we treat this again uh, itraconazole in the dose of 200 to 400 milligram per day for longer longer duration for six months is a drug of choice otherwise fluconazole iodide ketoconazole amphotericin b can also be given in sick patients this is uh, broad based budding uh, of the blastomycosis which is diagnostic then again budding uh, broad based budding uh, fungal cells then systemic candidiosis 
immunocompromised patient well macules papules nodules with pale center sometime they may become hemorrhagic some may develop a syndrome of chronic uh, mucocutaneous candidiasis and peronychia and the treatment is again a fluconazole or in severely ill patients iv amphotericin b can be given then these rare uh, defung- uh, the systemic fungal infections which are not seen in our country they are paracoxidiomycosis also known as south american blastomycosis seen in brazil it, uh, it is a chronic granulomatous infection clinically mucocutaneous in, uh, involvement is seen in progressively disseminated disease lesions are often painful and ulcerative nasal and oral mucosa are commonly involved we we noticed that mucocutaneous involvement is more common and again treatment with antifungals fluconazole ketoconazole itraconazole uh, for uh, about 6 months and itraconazole is a drug of choice uh, the clinically they appear, uh, they are uh, papillomodular lesions on the face and uh, mucosa uh, is also involved along with the skin then pilot feel appearance is seen in histopathology by the fungus and then another important uh, opportunistic fungal infection that is cryptococcus caused by cryptococcus neoformis it affects brain it causes meningitis in immunocompromised patient then lungs are also involved and skin can also, also be in- involved secondarily uh, and mostly it is associated with immunodeficiency syndrome and uh, clinically it can present as meningitis focal n- neural deficits can be there cutaneous findings they are firm cystic en like lesion erythema nodosum like lesion can be there acne like lesion can be there then commonly umbilicated papules that is molluscum contagiosum like lesions can be there and plaques and nodules can also be there for diagnosis microscopy uh, indian ink preparation uh, is done for demonstration of the capsule subsequently i'll be showing the slide and then uh, biopsy um, is also um, done skin biopsy then treatment fluconazole first line of therapy uh, for longer duration uh, then amphotericin b and flu cytosine combination for severe meningeal uh, disease or systemic disease is required you can see molluscum contagious uh, like lesion central umbilication is there some uh, they are small papular lesion with central central and uh, depression they are mol- molluscum contagious which is a viral infection that kind of lesion are there and this is indian ink preparation where we can demonstrate the uh, capsule of the cryptococcus so uh, last few slides uh, are in there opportunistic fungal infection mycosis then it can be systemic candidiasis uh, we have already discussed then aspergillosis uh, where necrotic papillomodular lesions and subcutaneous nodules can be there disseminated disease from pulmonary involvement is so commonly seen in immunocompromised patients uh, and then zygomycosis ecthyma gangrenosum like lesion cellulitis like lesion facial edema plaques large hemorrhagic crust and on the face can be seen in zygomycosis then cryptococcus we have already discussed this is another uh, fungal infection uh, that is few hyphomycosis lobomycosis and rhino ophthalmomycosis the first picture is few hyphomycosis we can see the pigmented uh, brownish uh, hyph- hyphal form and this is lobomycosis where keloid like lesions are there this is um, uh, not seen in india very rarely reported very rarely very rarely and this is rhinophthalmomycosis where whole of the face is deformed so sometimes these defungal infections they can be so agonizing for the patient and difficult to treat and they cause deformities in the patient so uh, this is the last uh, lecture of my fungal infection so some mcqs you have to do first one is the most common type of tinea angum is in hiv patient is either distal or lateral distal and lateral proximal subungual white superficial or total dystrophic the answer is white superficial the rose gardner disease is sporotrichosis it is not chromoblastomycosis histoplasmosis and blastomycosis it is sporotrichosis then which is diagnosed by indian ink preparation so it is cryptococcus neoformis Uh, which of the following is geophilic uh, fungus that is microsporum gypsum then spaghetti and meatball appearance is seen in p versicolor 
which of the following is called jocks each that is tinea corpor uh, cruris so uh, you have to identify this condition this is uh, uh, tinea pedis vesicular bullous type uh, this is uh, tinea corporis uh, the last one is p versicular thank you very much